Peace and blessing, Hare Krishna. I don't know how long I have for this video because I always got mad stuff going on on my phone. Mad, you know? Got like a lot of videos that got to come off my phone. But as it is, when I have a thought, I got to share it. And I'm here in this little restaurant and stuff. So my friend, she wanted me to call her this morning. She said she was mad excited. She was on YouTube last night. She was looking at some videos with some Tibetan singing bowls and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, that stuff clears your chakras. I got one of those Tibetan singing bowls. And, you know, people call me when they're lit. They call me when they're sad and depressed or they'll call me when they're lit. You know what I'm saying? So either when a person is very down, they're going to contact me or when a person is very up, they're going to contact me. I hardly hear about people when they're walking that middle path, you know what I mean? But anyway, as it is, I want to share the fact that, so she told me, she was like, yeah, um, so something about she woke up this morning, I forgot exactly what she said, but the essence of what she had said was that she woke up this morning feeling very, 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 very happy because she knew that God loves her. This is what the lady said to me. She felt very, very happy because she knew that God loves her. And right there, I was like, stop, because that's a significant point, and we got to talk about that. So I was telling her that, first of all, Krishna is the leader of all living entities, right? He is para, he is meta, which means he's beyond. He's beyond, he's from the realm the fourth platform, the fourth dimension. He's way, matter of fact, speaking of way beyond, so more Vedic evidence has been confirmed recently by NASA. Basically, what they said in NASA is that, well, they were looking at a small, just a sliver of the sky with their Hubble, Hubble telescope, something called Hubble Deep Field. They were looking at a small sliver of the sky. And apparently, they upgraded their machinery or their techniques. Now they're saying that their estimates were all wrong to say that we have 10 to 20 billion galaxies in that one small area of the sky was actually wrong. They said there's at least 10 times the amount of stars and galaxies that they previously discovered. Okay, so we're just dealing with the material cosmos here. The Vedas give us information that this Brahmanda is a limited spectrum. It has dimensions, just like your soul has dimensions. A lot of people talk a lot of good stuff. Metaphysicists, conscious people, whatever. They talk a lot of trash about the soul. They talk about the nature of reality. Ain't none of them picked up the bag of Agita to get that real information from the source himself. Not like, you know, I woke up and I got inspired by God and I wrote the bag of Agita. Nah, I'm talking about stuff that's spoken by God himself, the science, the absolute science, right? So uh, before I get too far astray from the subject, because I'm good for that, long story short, scientists now know that the universe is at least 10 times bigger and it has at least 10 times more things. That's just a humilifying point to remind you that you are no better than a worm in stool. You cannot make any assumptions about your position based upon this small existence that you're living. If the universe has 10 times more stars, 10 to 20 times more stars, and 10 to 20 times more space, that just shows you how vast of a scope of reality we're dealing with. Everything that we're dealing with is much more vast than we could comprehend. So I would just suggest everybody be humble and accept the information from a superior source. That way you can't go wrong. So, back to Krishna. That's just an example that if the material limited cosmos can be so vast and so powerful, then can you imagine, hey, hey, cover your mouth, Baba. Don't kill me, man. That's the salt. Cover your mouth, man. Got Zika going around. I ain't got no damn Obamacare. You gotta be careful out here, man. They be bringing bacteria from other planets, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we should be humble, cause remember, for all we know, the universe is so vast, this whole planet Earth, this whole solar system could be existing inside somebody's toilet bowl somewhere. Real talk, you know what I'm saying? This, where we at right now, you don't have full information. 
you don't comprehend everything that's going on around you. Your senses are not sharp enough. They're dull. So this whole galaxy that we in could be in a pile of poop. So be humble because you ain't no better than a worm in stool. Everybody want to be so high and mighty. The best you're going to live is 40 to 60 years, maybe 100 years if you're lucky. You ain't nothing. Everything in absence of Krishna is moot, is nil, is zero. So that brings us back to this unlimited absolute person. I mean, let's just consider Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva exists outside of this universe. He's on a whole different platform from the living entities themselves. So I am Jiva Atma. I am a regular living entity. Then you have Shiva Tattva, the science of Shiva, and he's neither a living entity and he's not God either. So he's in a category by itself. Then you got Vishnu Tattva, which is even higher than Lord Shiva. But just to compare Shiva to this universe, it is said that his body alone is the size of Europe. I don't even accept that. I think his body is much bigger than that because he has Mahesh Dham. He has his own world. So as it is, you do have different manifestations of Shiva or the Rudra, the fierce ones, at least 11 manifestations of Lord Shiva. And then you got Sada Shiva, so that's the biggest Shiva. And there's a whole science to him. Oh, this is so, so beautiful, man, this Vedic science. And if y'all think this is deep, y'all ain't heard nothing yet. Wait till you start learning about the four Kumaras, these four little naked, naked twins. So different people worship Krishna in different modes. Some people worship him in the mode of opulence. That would be like the Sri Sampradaya or Lakshmi. So those people tend to attract a lot of money and wealth and beauty because they worship through and end service because they worship through the mode of Lakshmi. Then you have the mode of the Brahma Madhava Sampradaya. They worship through the mode of dedication and devotion. Their spiritual lineage takes them to Narad Muni. Eshu and Brahma, the first and most intelligent person in the universe. You have Shiva Sampradaya. They worship in a different mode. But the people who worship in the mode of knowledge is the four Kumaras. So as deep as y'all think as these Prabhupada books are and the Hare Krishna, it is deep. It is deep because we come from a, a line of Shiksha. So we, ins we are instructors. But man, if you want to really get into some real fine tune science I have not even read a Kumara book I'm afraid to read stuff from the Kumara Sampradaya because I know it's so deep that I would just have to abandon everything and just sit on a rock somewhere throw on some saffron garb and just sit and read for the rest of my life if I'm even going to comprehend a little of what they talking about but to show you the unlimited person so homegirl was telling me she was like yo nothing else mattered at that point so i was trying to tell her that yeah people meet krishna all the time like i always love to tell people i had a cousin who was in surgery from a, a bike accident he's he looked at me and when he opened his mouth his mom's looked at me like he was crazy she kind of sh shook her head like don't listen to this boy she didn't say that but you know you could read body language and facial expressions she was like my son is crazy he was heavily sedated <laughs> he said caprice God is black. He didn't say blackish. He didn't say he's an Indian black or African black. I'm just repeating him words. The man said God is black. He said God is very beautiful. Matter of fact, God is the most beautiful person you ever seen. And his skin is the most beautiful thing. And he said it glows and it radiates. And he said something that was really cliche. Something that you hear a lot. All you felt was love. And I did not want to leave his presence. A lot of people do experience that. So I'm telling homegirl. Listen, a lot of people meet Krishna, and I ain't talking about just in dreams. I'm talking about really, like, he'll manifest before you. He'll talk to you. He'll play with you. He'll knock you out if he have to. <clears throat> so, with all of that said, I said that when these people see Krishna, just a glimpse of his lotus feet, apparently this person, Krishna, is so great that if you just see... But first, coffee... That's a nice shirt there. Okay. No, chant Hare Krishna first, then have a cup of coffee, all right? Decaf if you can. Yeah, you know. I love giving attention where attention is due. Um, 
When people just see a glimpse or a glance at the lotus feet of Krishna, everything changes. They realize how everything that they was looking for in life is insignificant. And I bring that up just to show you that NASA was right. A part of the universe we live in, the planet we live on is insignificant. The only reason it has purpose, the only reason Earth attracts attention is because Krishna performed his loving pastimes on this planet as recent as 5,000 years ago. And it is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam that the leaders of the various planetary systems and we're talking about galactical warlords, we're talking about demigods, and we're talking about angels, and we're talking about kings, and we're talking about demons. Remember, everything is set up by rank. Everything is a rank in this universe. There's angels.